Hi, I'm Charlie and welcome to another video with, uh, from Chadwick TMD. A little bit different today. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm building a, uh, a structure, a factory, but it's for the club I belong to, which is West Campbell Model Railway Society down here in deepest, darkest Somerset. Um, I went along to a model railway show at Thornbury, uh, which is north of Bristol, and Skytrex had a stand and I picked up from Skytrex this brochure um, and it shows the structures and barrels and, and line side uh, stuff that they produce. Um, and it's mostly in sort of hard resin kind of structures. Um, our model railway in the, in the club, we have an area that we wish to fill um, with a kind of a factory low relief kind of thing over on one corner just to give it a, a th further dimension and a bit more interest. Um, so initially what I did um, was at the show I bought um, two of these, I think they're called North, North Light Factory uh, structures and the idea was I could chop and change it um, to any length and then for the corner I'd simply um, cut the top, cut the top section away um, and take it from there. But when we got back to, back to the club it didn't really seem to do the job because what we needed was something a little bit more substantial. So I then um, got back on the phone to them and ordered two more of the two-storey ones. So um, this is what we've ended up with. And the idea then is it will go on to right on the, on the edge of a layout. Um, so this, if the wall of the layout was kind of here, if you like, um, and then that would kind of walk, go along the, along the edge of the layout at an angle to give it a bit more depth. So what I'll do is I'll run through now in, in close up what these things are like and, uh, and then build them up. So a quick run through of the bits I've got here. These are the two I mentioned earlier, the two um, single story factory um, pieces, all kind of, kind of straightforward. Um, as you can see, the windows are, are solid and you can't really um, dremel these out. I think the whole thing is rather brittle. And the idea um, is um, to blow a coat of paint over these structures um, and then paint these black and then pick out the Georgian bars um, and obviously weather them down, but they won't be translucent. They won't be, you know, glass translucent see-through windows. They will be um, painted uh, gloss black um, and uh, to, you know, to, to make it look right where I can't really pick out those, those uh, the glass itself. What you get, with each panel, you get a uh, an extra drain pipe, so if you need that um, to extend, uh, well, sorry, to turn the corner or to end the, end the wall there, if you're going to go straight into the next one, then obviously the drain pipe comes with it. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have this as, instead of six long, I'm going to have it as five, um, if you like, roof sections long, um, and then cut one straight down the edge and then cut the roof off and then turn that one through 90 degrees so it will be five long and then one wide and then but at, with the layout placed at an angle um, to give it a little bit more depth and interest. Now I'm not going to cut off this end section here um, because I don't I think that's asking for trouble really because when you just kind of dremel along these things they never end up quite right so what I'm going to do is cut the um, the back section off this end here, so I'm going to cut down there with a the Dremel, cut the roof off and then that will give me uh, the five sections to run along and then, and then one across the back if that kind of makes sense. Um, I'm a great lover of Dremels, I think like most blokes we all love our power tools don't we? Um, and this is the Dremel I use, it's a little battery operated one and it works quite well, two speeds, um, high and low um, and the normal sort of discs. Word of warning, when using these discs, they do have a habit of splitting and you really wouldn't want them in, the end, in, in your eyes. Um, I wear reading glasses all the time for close-up work, um, so I, kind of, I don't wear goggles, but I have some protection. Um, but I also own um, a much bigger, more meaty um, uh, power tool, and this one's got a variable speed and everything else. Um, and this is the one that, and this is the one that I'm going to use um, to cut along the, this edge here. Um, see how we get on. 
Um, again, as I mentioned previously, I'll leave links to the tools that I use um, in, the, in the description below. So I'll kind of firstly cut those off and see how we get on. Um, and I'll let you know in just a few minutes. I think using the disc cutter here is going to generate quite a lot of dust. Um, so I'm just using these, um, one of these uh, cheap 3M type face masks. Um, I don't really want to particularly get these, uh, these dust particles in me. In my lungs. And there we go, piece of cake that is. Yeah, just a word of word of warning there. Um, when you use the, the disc cutter on these, which makes a, a, a brilliant cut straight through, no problem at all, but it does generate a great deal of dust. So either do it outside, um, you know, with a wind behind you kind of thing, or a little face mask is exactly what you need. Um, that uh, piece came off very, very easily. Um, and now all I'm gonna do is run the disc cutter again, straight down here. Straight, straight down that line there, um, and then we can uh, we can crack on. Okay, well that wasn't a bundle of laughs doing it indoors. The, the dust really just does go everywhere. Um, so I suggest you do this outside. If you can, I don't know if you can see this edge here, it is just, you know, there's just needs a little bit of a, a rub down. And again, I'll do that in just a second um, with a disc cutter. Whilst you're doing it with a disc, disc cutter, you're trying to keep it um, square, but of course you've got the relief on here, which push this, pushes this up. But um, anyway, I made, a, I think, a, a, a good reasonable job of that. Um, and the pieces on the floor, excuse me, Ooh. will now obviously become the section um, on the end. Right, I'll clean these bits up and then uh, we'll have a look at gluing them together. So that's those ends cleaned up now. Um, the, the Dremel does tend to wander very, very slightly because of that relief. Um, but I don't know if you can see this. It, because I cut the cut it off this end, as it were, so you're not going to be able to, you, you won't actually see any, uh, any irregularities on this end because it, where, where you'll see on the layout, it butts up to something else. And then here is a perfect uh, upright because it's straight out of the mold. And this is the edge that I've cut here. So uh, hopefully now this is where we'll kind of end up, like that. The glue I'm going to try and use and see if this works is Deluxe Rocket Max, which is the thick non-runny Sino glue. And I'm sure you've all seen this kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's about five quid a bottle. Um, and then, so I shall put the uh, butt these together here, obviously glue the edges and then um, with a bit of uh, plastic on the back to reinforce it, um, we can uh, uh, get them nice and flush and get them nice and, nice and strong. And then obviously put the same one on the end there. 
Now using uh, this, this super glue here, this Rocket Max, um, the instructions are um, you apply it just to, just to one edge um, and then hold the parts together. Let me just first, I've got the right edges, haven't I? That's the cut, that's the cut end there. So it's these two I want to join. So yeah, okay, we'll go for that. We'll apply it to one edge. I must confess, I'm never a lover of the, the super glues. I never think they stick as well as, as uh, this kind of published, but hopefully Rocket Max won't let us down. I need a piece of paper underneath there. Excuse me, Skytrax, when I use that. Well, that seems to have worked uh, quite well. Seems uh, reasonably sturdy. Um, I've had a look at my scrap box and I found a bit of old Will's paving. So what I'm going to do now is, um, is super glue that over the join and then leave that to dry uh, for, a, for a good while. And again, you only apply it to one side apparently. And I'm certainly not going to scrimp on this glue because the last thing I really need is this coming apart. Okay, and I place it over there and I always give it a kind of a little bit of a wiggle to allow the glue to spread and then turn it over, put it down on, on the other side and just hold that down. It says it always says 10 to 20 seconds to set, um, so I'll just hold it here for um, perhaps a bit longer, perhaps sort of 30 seconds to a minute. Now whilst that is setting, there's a couple of other bits I'd like to show you if I can really zoom in here. These were the initial ones that I bought, um, but they also do um, separate sort of packs. Um, and this one here, for example, is a loading bay and it comes with a little roof section. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit closer than that. Um, a roof section and also um, the, uh, the loading dock at the bottom. So you can uh, manipulate these uh, to your own ends, really. Um, there's another one, which is this one here, which is um, a kind of a doorway. And then you get a set of steps um, to go over there. So you can uh, change these that, to look um, as, you, as you'd like. And what I'm going to do is put the loading bay on... The loading bay I'm going to glue onto the centre section of this one here, so that will look like that. And then the doorway onto the end panel, wherever I put that. So there's the end panel. So the doorway I'm going to glue over, over the top of those windows and pop that one on there. So that's what I'm going to do next. So as before, it's a case of uh, applying the, the rocket glue to one side at a time. And the centre one, so it's going to go there. And hopefully on the other side of this is obviously that piece of um, old paving, that plastic paving, uh, that part, that wheels kit is obviously uh, curing as we do this. Okay. So try and get that in the centre. Then pop that down there. And again, 20 to 30 seconds, so that should hold that there. Okay, that appears to be okay. <clears throat> so now I'll, uh, I'll pop in the roof, the roof section cover. which fits in quite snugly. That's it. That 
Actually, I'm not too sure that is it. I'm just going to take a slither off the side of this. Yes, that's better. That's a better fit. Okay, so I'll re-glue that. And then there's obviously the loading dock which goes on underneath, so we'll glue that. You obviously have to be cautious with this super glue. I have glued my fingers together before um, and I'm sure I'll glue them together again but um, clearly we don't tend to learn from, uh, from our own experiences. Um, so what I'll try to do now is to glue that one, that end pat door into there and then that one into there. Okay, and then we can talk about spraying this lot up and get a nice, nice finish on it. Now, if you remember what I said about the precautions when using super glue, well, here is a prime example, and this is kind of, I was trying to get the roof section on, and it just seemed a little bit wonky, so I took it off, and uh, hopefully, with the, uh, with the aid of uh, uh, Swan Morton's scalpel, I can remove this without, uh, and hopefully cutting through the, uh, the super glue, and not my finger. I think it emphasises the point, doesn't it? You can't be too, too careful when using these super glues. They are kind of dreadful, aren't they? Still, we live and learn. Probably as we don't, do we? Well, it's starting to take shape. As you can see, um, it is nice and rigid. There's the piece of um, uh, Will's kit on the back. And I put the loading dock door on here. That was the, the roof section there that I decided to uh, to bond my index finger to. Uh, there's the doors and obviously the loading ramp, that works well. On the end panel, I've uh, glued on the, the, the face panel for the, the, the pedestrian entrance. And what I'm gonna do now is naturally glue these two together. And uh, this will, whoops, I think it goes on the end there. This will naturally be a weak point because it's obviously easy for this to flex around. So, what I thought I would do is um, to reinforce there, I've got a couple of old um, Pico buffer stops. If I can just zoom in a second, if you can see these. A couple of these old Pico buffer stops. I tend not to throw anything away. So as they're a box section, what I thought I would do is glue them in there and in there. So if I turn that on its side, so that's the kind of way they will be and they will then reinforce um, the shape uh, of the right angle and stop, stop this flexing. Right, so that's what I'm going to try next. I found two cardboard boxes to, to um, hold that and stop it rocking. So that's where these old two buffer stops will go, is there and there, if you can see those. Let me just try to zoom in a little bit. And then I'll glue this end panel on the end. So what I'm going to do first is glue the buffer stops to this panel. And then after uh, five or so minutes, then I'll glue this one both on the edge of the, uh, the warehouse and on, onto the buffer stops themselves. Right, that's those in. And uh, they're well stuck. So the next thing is to glue the end piece on. So to that end, I shall firstly glue, put some glue on the end of the buffer stops. And then 
around the end and it goes that way yep so it's run the end down the end of on the edge of the end panel then offer that up to there we should be good to go no we need to do this vertically super glue on the fingers for a change and again and again and again no nope, that's not as easy as it seems Um, what I'm going to do now is good at using good old Halfords grey primer, which is you know straight out the uh, set of Halfords. It's a, a, a body shop grey primer. Is I'll blow a coat of uh, of grey all over over this, a um, couple of coats of that, and then when that's when that's cured, I'll uh, so when that's dried off, I'll then fill in some of the the gaps if I need to, um, such as around this roof section, this little bit gappy, and around that door section, um, and then eventually. Uh, blow another coat um, of, of brickwork, you know, with a with an ordinary air gun. Um, but I, anyway, I nip outside. I'm not going to do that in here. I nip outside now and uh, and put a coat of grey primer on it. Well, that's pretty much it for stage one. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'll take it to the model railway club and see if uh, if the, if it works, if it fits there, see if that if it looks okay. And the next thing is to is to blow a coat of brickwork over there. Um, and I'll come back to you and show you how to do that. Um, I'm, I realise for the more experienced models, it's a bit kind of Mickey Mouse, but well, we all have to learn somewhere. We all have to start somewhere, and hopefully, it's been some use to some people. A um, couple of things I forgot to mention is before I started, I did remove all the flash and uh, all the bits and bobs um, from these uh, from these mouldings before I started, and then it's always best to sort of wash them down in a detergent. Um, from then on and remember the most important thing you learned today is not to super glue your fingers together thanks so much I'll be back in a few days well here we are at West Camel Model Railway Society down in Somerset on one of our uh, club days and you can see by popping the uh, this model uh, onto the edge of the layout next to a siding um, you can see how the loading dock lines up uh, with the wagons um, and that's where we we were going to put it. We've cut the hillside away um, and just made a, a gap for it. Um, and that's where we think it's best, the best it'll sit. Um, quick whiz around. And uh, yeah, it looks okay there. So uh, I'll get on and, uh, and get it painted up. Okay, back home again. And uh, here's the layout, here's the, the building structure now. And what I've done is I've used an airbrush and I've blown um, a coat of Humbrol Matte 70 over the whole building um, to give it that red brick colour. Um, and it does look very, very flat, I must confess. Um, what I've also done is used a Humbrol um, Black Sheen paint, um, and I'll leave all the numbers of the paints in the description below if you press the See More, See More Details tab. Um, and what I've done with that is I've picked out all the windows and it gives it a semi-gloss to it so that it kind of looks like glass. It has a reflective uh, characteristic about it rather than using a matte black. Um, so a little bit of a challenge to paint all those windows. Um, and then um, I thought, well, what am I going to do about the, the weathering of it? So if I can zoom in now and you can see what I've done on the end of the building. Let's have a little look. Okay, so with, with the end section, um, what I've done is obviously uh, the same as the others where I've 
I blacked out the windows um, after, after blowing the coat of paint over it. But I've also, sorry, I need to put my glasses on for this to have a look. I've also picked out the Georgian bars and I used a Humbrol, I think it was Humbrol 316, if I can get that right. Yes, I used, no, not sorry, not Humbrol 6, I used a Revel uh, Mat 316 um, for the Georgian bars and the window frames on the end section. Um, and then for the concrete lintels, I used another uh, Revel paint that I had to hand in a Mat 16. And, you know, they look okay, they kind of do the job. Um, for the uh, the uh, shelter, the, the roof section here, which is kind of a bitumen colour, I just used the standard roof dirt, which is again, a, uh, sorry, this is a rail match um, roof dirt. And I, hopefully you can see that I've actually done some weathering on this top section, if I can zoom right in here now. You can see my painting. Um, on this top section of brickwork, I've used uh, the Humbrol black wash, uh, enamel black wash on this top section just to see what it would look like um, and I think it looks okay so what I'll do next is I shall um, I shall weather the whole building if I can zoom out here so what I'm going to do next is using this this Humbrol wash um, I shall wash the whole building and then I will start on the details of the window frames um, and the lintels um, and uh, and the door sections and I think I'll do the doors in a green I'm not going to do them in a, a rail a railway color such as you know GWR kind of brown or whatever um, I think I'd rather have them um, as a factory rather than a, rather than a corporate look um, also what I'll probably do is pick out certain uh, runs of brick with a, a granite kind of grey um, to give it again give it another sort of a, a th make it more th three-dimensional and, um, and then the finally is the top sections is these uh, these exhaust vents on the top so I'll do something with those as well um, so that's it it's all kind of come together really um, hopefully you can see from the end section that it has potential and hopefully should look like a, uh, a reasonable model um, the next phase of it I'm going to do in a second video I think this one's gone on long enough um, so I'll do another video once, once I've um, done all the, the, the painting and then go on to how to construct the roof and the north lights and also perhaps put a floor in it and, and put some lights in it so that the, the north lights have, um, have some lights coming out of them as it were. So there we go. Um, so I think it's worth a mention this Skytrex model is nothing to do with Skytrex. I mean I've just made it, they haven't paid for it, there's no I'm not sort of um, you know, uh, suggesting you go and buy it. There's nothing going on like that. There's loads of these type of models available. Um, I just fancy doing one of these when I saw it at the show at Thornbury. So there we go. Um, so all the details I've used. Oh, sorry, one other piece. Um, when, I've fa when I've painted the end section here, I find it very difficult. Um, and I always use one of these kind of Cyclops-looking cyclops Optivisor things. Um, it's the only way that I can really see... Uh, for close in work. I, I wear reading glasses anyway, but I can wear the reading glasses with these um, and it enables me to sort of do um, a lot more close in detail. I don't think without that I, I'd, I'd have to find something else, but I, I really can't do the, the fine detail anymore. Um, and I'll leave, the, I'll leave that in the description as well. So there we go. That's the end of part one. Um, I'll see you at part two in a few weeks time. Um, if you enjoyed this, please hit the, uh, the like, thumbs up, and perhaps the subscribe button, and I'll see you at part two. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.